I Stopped Running Alone by K.B. Hurst. I stood over the body, my lean and starving. Mud covered my legs and invaded the crevices of my thighs and buttocks. My head was bleeding, but I had no idea why. With a cold reality, I remembered. He came from nowhere on a desolate road. It was a road I had run a thousand times or more. It was quiet and roughly five in the morning. It was my favorite time of day to run. You know, no one was around and I could just listen to nature as I ran. I ran every day from when I was 11 or 12 until about my senior year in college. And now as I trained to hope for a stab at the Olympics someday soon. I'd finished first in my last race, 100. And my times were so good that I caught the attention of a coach that helped some of the best runners reach their potential. I only remembered it was raining and I had on a ball cap, short runner shorts, tennis shoes, and a tank top that covered me to about my midriff. It was the only way I felt comfortable running. The less you had to get in the way, the better you ran and the more of a workout I got. I had to save. You know, I was fit, so I had to stay that way. Afterward, I had planned to go to the gym and work on my upper body strength. All that tedious detail aside, I was there standing at the corner of Marsh and Eldridge when a red pickup truck slowed at the same stop sign. Before I knew it, I felt the back of my neck being dragged into the truck. The passenger side door opened quickly and a large man tossed me inside. I never saw the face of the stranger that had kidnapped me. I didn't think to scream. I was in so much shock. I just looked around like a wild animal, willing my brain to come into focus so I could understand what had just happened. My eyes were duct taped, and my mouth too. My hands were tied and bound to my ankles. I had no idea how he was doing this to me so quickly. I mean, I was a lean girl, but damn. I sat in an upright fetal position like a turkey on Thanksgiving morning, ready to be stuffed. Then I heard a rustling. He was grabbing something from the back of the pickup truck. It was a large blanket, and it was being tossed over me, and I was now covered completely up. My guess is so no other drivers would notice the tied-up chick in the front seat. Yet here I was, tossed over like a sack of potatoes, and the car slowly turned the corner. There wasn't a reason to rush, I guess since no one was out this time of the morning. But then I smelled the cigarette. He had lit a cigarette so casually, as though what just happened was just a regular Tuesday. The realization of what happened to me was sinking in suddenly. I screamed internally, trying to grasp how it happened and where he was taking me. It was so scary and yet I tried to remain as calm as possible. Finally, we turned into a drive and I heard the truck engine cease. I wondered what could happen to me now. I was alone, scared, and I had never cared as much as a phone with me, even when I ran. I remember how I mentioned I liked as little as possible when I ran. Yeah. <laughs> I now realize that was stupid. Of course, how can I use a phone if I were tied up like a wild animal? I heard the door I was leaning up against open, and I fell into the arms of the kidnapper. He wore a thick coat and wasn't the least bit ruthless in his handling of me. I cried internally, this time losing all hope as I felt my assailant now dragging me on gravel as though I were nothing more than an inanimate object. My skin was ripping against the stone, and I moaned in pain. My kidnapper stayed very quiet and made it all the more terrifying. I felt my body on top of something wooden and my head scraped against an old nail. Ouch. Ugh, I moaned, barely able to because of how tight the duct tape was around my face. I landed on what felt like a mat of some kind. I heard running water, then I listened to my assailant walking towards me with what sounded like big boots. And then I heard a door shut and I began to pant in fear. 
I felt my arms and legs in so much pain from scraping along the gravel, which I guess was a driveway. I heard the footsteps, which were now standing right beside me. I waited, but he didn't move. Suddenly I felt something sharp, and it cut the tape away from my legs. I was quickly held together, unable to fight back. I then felt my ankles being chained to the corners of the mat I was lying on. Then my arms were treated in the same manner and chained above me. I was chained from corner to corner of the mat. I felt my body tremble now. Then I heard a muffled laughter coming from my assailant. I waited to be raped or stabbed, but instead, I heard the door open and close. A literal chill went up and down my body. The room was ice cold and I felt my body grow numb from the cold. I was there for hours. I know it was hours because my eyes now had the slightest amount of light just creeping under the duct tape. It was only more torturous for me knowing I could see a little. It was just enough to make me realize how long I was there. I thought a lot about what I would do if I ever got out of this mess. I didn't know how, but I'd find a way. The door crept open again, and then I heard those same boots on the wooden floor. I didn't know if I was in a shed or a barn, but it smelled of piss and shit. Something hit my eardrums, nearly shocking me back to life. Whoever it was had what sounded like pots and pans banging in front of my face. I could hear them laughing again, and then I felt something like a feather touch my chest. This is when it would happen. This is when I would be attacked. But then it stopped again, and I heard the door open and close once more. More hours passed. This time the door opened again, and I smelled something dirty, like B.O., but it was way worse, and then I felt the vibration of growling. Oh my god, I'm going to be food for a large animal. The growling went on for a long time, and I heard a chain on the floor. It, too, was chained. But what was it? Wild dog? A boar? I had no idea. I just knew I was growing more terrified by the second. I still had duct tape on my mouth, and I was so thirsty now. I began to moan as I felt wet tears underneath my mask of duct tape. I felt something touching my arm. It was wet and warm. Then I realized someone or something was licking me. Ugh, I moaned again, more licking. I could barely breathe, but I took a deep breath trying to calm myself for the fear that I now possessed. More laughing under their breath. It was making me angry now. What was this person doing? What were their plans for me? Part of me just wanted it over whatever it was. The not knowing was the torture. I felt something hairy touching the part of my face that wasn't completely covered in duct tape. It smelled terrible, severely even. I gagged a bit, hoping I wouldn't choke on my own vomit. It seemed to be rubbing its hands all over my face. Then I felt it pull my face up and slam me down again. Oh, I moaned again, trying not to show any signs of fear if this creature got off on it. I coughed under the duct tape mask and realized that the sweat must have loosened the tape from my mouth. It came undone. I was now able to breathe freely from my mouth. I didn't want it to be known that I had that small amount of freedom, so I tried not to make a sound. I couldn't see anything really well, only hints of light and dark. But I could make out that the person was very dark, or an animal. Perhaps it was just a person wearing a mask? I had no idea. And as soon as they arrived, they had walked away again. I could hear the chains dragging along the floor of the building I was in. The door slammed. 
and then I heard it lock. More time passed, and I now knew it was night out. I tried to see if I could manage an escape by twisting my wrists. Unfortunately for me, they had them in a tightly bound knot. I was, for lack of better words, trapped. I finally fell asleep and dreamt I was at home cuddling with my cats, Lilo and Stitch. I know it was not original, but it was my favorite growing up. Suddenly I was awoken by a harsh feeling of wet and cold. Someone had tossed ice water all over my body. I woke up realizing I was still trapped in this horrifying predicament. I screamed, and I began to cry mainly out of exhaustion and anger. My would-be attacker now had even more sinister plans for me. I felt something cold touch the inner part of my thighs again. I don't know if it was a gloved hand or a wet towel, but something was touching the inner part of my thighs, massaging them. What on earth? I then felt the chains unlock and my ankles. And I felt someone unchain my wrists as well. As soon as they did, they stood me up. I had no balance from being stretched out as I had been in that darkly cold room. I could make out the person was wearing an oversized red and black plaid jacket built for the season. It was rather cold these last few weeks. My knees seemed to come to life first when I felt the grip on me loosen. Walk. I heard a voice under what I guessed was a scarf or a mask. I walked the best I could. I didn't want to move far because I couldn't see. Once I steadied myself, I knew I may only have one chance at escape. I quickly tore the duct tape from my eyes as soon as I could and ran for what I believed was the door. I fell to the floor as something hit me from behind. Fuck. I wasn't knocked unconscious. I now noticed there was a tool near me, and the assailant was now limping toward me. I quickly grabbed a large stick hitting him in the face. I saw that behind them was a large garage door and outside was fresh air and sunlight. I ran as fast as I could before I felt them grab me by the waist and push me to the ground. The ground was cold as ice and muddy from an old tractor. No! The person screamed as I kicked them in the face. I tried the best I could to kick them until they lost unconsciousness, bringing us to the present. I stood over the person who had what looked like a dark navy scarf wrapped around their face. Curiosity got the better of me and I pulled it down. To my utter shock, it was no man, as I had begun to believe. It was a woman, not a bad one either. She didn't look crazy and maniacal, not like what I had pictured in my mind. She was tall and in good shape which is probably why she could kidnap me as she had. I heard it then, the sounds of chains behind me. I turned around and saw it. It was a hairy man, barely able to walk, absolutely covered in monstrous hair. Pauline, Pauline! It growled and moaned, barely audible to my ears, still half wrapped in duct tape. The beastly man came into view, and when he saw me, he began to rush towards me. He had to be at least eight feet tall. I ran as fast as I could until I reached a road. I could hear the chains behind me as I ran. I don't know if he was half man, half beast. I didn't stick around to find out. I didn't care what they wanted with me either. An older woman picked me up and drove me to the police station when I got to the main road. They seemed to recognize that I had been through a terrifying ordeal. Yet, when they went to the old homestead that I had described, they told me no one had lived there for over 50 years. The last known residents were a man and a woman, Pauline and Gary Elway. They had been dead and gone for some 25 years. I knew that had to be a mistake. It had to be. The police finally gave up searching as there weren't any leads. 
till last week, that is. I was sitting in my living room trying to watch something funny on TV with my two cats by my side when I heard a loud vehicle outside my house. The engine was revving up at the end of my driveway. When I peered out the window, I saw it. It was that red pickup truck. I sat there for a while, and then it pulled away. I'm not sure what I will do. I may have to stay with a friend, but whoever they are, they are not going to stop until they have me again. That much I know. My only question is, what do I do?